In this video, we'll share how to make a thumbnail for YouTube that actually gets clicked. We'll go step by step through the process using the best free YouTube thumbnail maker app right now so that you can create a click worthy thumbnail in no time. So the tool that we're using in this video is Adobe Express. It's amazing. It's free. There is a paid option as well to unlock all the functionality. But hey, you can also get away with a free one. Now, if you're already using another tool like Canva or Snapper, both of those are great as well, then you can follow along with what I'm doing. Obviously, you're gonna be clicking in different places, but the process is going to be the same. So you wanna go ahead and sign up with a free account or sign in if you already have one. So I'm signed in. You can see I am on the free account because it's offering for me to upgrade to premium here. But straight away across this top menu bar here, we can see some of the different things that you can create. If we scroll across here, then you can see we've got YouTube thumbnail. And when you mouse over this, we've got two options. We can start a new design from scratch, or we can go through and we can browse through some templates that are in here for us to use and to customize up. So if we click on that, then straight away, if we scroll down here, we can see there's so many different designs and things that we can use either to customize up ourselves or to use as inspiration for our own designs. So let's say for instance, this one here, if we click on it, then now it's fully customizable. We can pick stuff up, we can move it around, we can delete stuff, we can add our own images. Everything is really easy to modify and to change and make it our own. Now I'm just gonna go back out of this because we are gonna create something from scratch. So again, I could come over here to YouTube thumbnail and create from scratch, or you can come up here and you can choose custom size and you can type in the size manually. So I'm gonna go 1920 by 1080. And we're gonna go create a new file. And this now is our canvas area that we're gonna be working on. Over on the left-hand side here, we've got our main menu bar with the different tools and functionality and things in here. We've also got a secondary menu bar across the top. Now this one changes as you're in different areas and have different things selected, but this is the main area that we're gonna be working with. Now for the purposes of this video here, we're actually gonna be creating a very similar thumbnail image to a thumbnail image on our channel. So you can see we've got a picture of me on the side. We've got this graph or chart image here. We've got some stars or space in the background and we've got some big bold text on the side. So we're gonna create something very similar to this. So the first place I like to start is with the background. And there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. If we come over here to media, then we can upload photos, videos, audio, anything from our own computer. So if we already have a file that we wanna use, we can upload that and use that. You'll also see here under media, there is a bunch of other assets that we can use in here too. Now there is a mix of free and paid things in here. You can see all the ones with this little crown down the bottom. Those are premium assets that you will need to be on the paid plan to use. But all of these without it, then you don't need to be. So we can come up here and we can search for space. And we can start to see that we get some space backgrounds here. This one here is free. This could work pretty well for us. We'll just scroll down and have a look at what else is in here. But I think this could work well. Here's another option here. Yeah, I think I like the first one. So let's just select this one. Let's delete the second one. With this first one here then, let's scale it up so that it actually fits in the background here of our image. Now it is very dark, obviously it's space, but we can customize this up a little bit. So if we come down here with this selected, we come down to effects, then you can see we've got the ability here to change up the colors a little bit on this. So you can see that if we click on some of these different colors here, it's applying that straight away to that image. Now these are probably a bit bright. These darker ones down here aren't too bad, it's changing the color. But we can come over here to custom and then we get to change the colors on the shadows area and the highlights area. So the highlights, I'm happy to leave this here as a white or as a bright color, maybe even a light blue. And for the shadows, instead of them being black, maybe we will swap that to, let's go more colors, like a dark blue, maybe a little darker. So we wanna come up here to custom and then we can choose a darker color down here. Yeah, something like that looks pretty good. And then we can close out of this. So I'm happy with that background. Now it is worth noting that if you weren't able to find what you needed in under the media area here and you didn't have an image to upload, there's also an amazing AI text to image feature in here as well, where we can just click on this. We can then type in what we want the Adobe AI to create for us, maybe a shooting star. We can also specify the content type here as well. And you can then see the different types of images that are generated for you purely using AI. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this because it's not a fit for what we're creating here right now, but I did wanna show off that awesome feature. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll upload the image of me that we're gonna put on the right-hand side here. 
So we're gonna go to media, we're going to upload from device. Got this image here, Justin. And you can see just how fast that is to upload. Now from here, we can pick this up, we can move it around, we can scale it up. So we're gonna want it around here somewhere, maybe a little bit bigger, something like this. But obviously we want the background removed. So with this image selected, we can come over here to remove background and it's gone ahead and it's cropped that out for us. Now there is a little warning down the bottom here that said that the background removal feature is free for a limited time. So right now, this is a free thing. It's actually been free for quite a while. But if you're watching this and they've removed that feature for free and you're not willing to jump on their paid plan. I mean, hey, that would be a good reason to jump on their paid plan. I'll have linked in the description below some other ways that you can easily remove the background from your photos for you. All right, so we've got this image here now. We're going to move it off to the side a little bit more. Maybe we'll scale it up a bit, something like this. And we will make this look a bit better very soon. But next we're gonna go ahead and add in our text. So I wanna come over here to text. Now we can again go through these presets, find something that we like and bring it in and customize it up or we can create something purely from scratch. So I'm just gonna come up here, add to text. I'm gonna select this and we're gonna type in our first word was revive. Now, if I select this, then we can customize it up. So I'm going to choose our font. Let's choose Oswald Bold. That's what we use at Primal Video. Now I wanna change the color to white. So we'll come down here to fill. Let's choose white. The other thing we will do is we'll close up the letter spacing between each of these. So if we hit on this little button here, text spacing, then we can adjust the letter spacing here to bring it a little bit closer together, something like that. Okay, so we've got our first word. Let's bring this up here. Now to save us creating this again from scratch, we can duplicate it. So we can just right click on it and choose duplicate and we have another exact replica of it. So our next one here is gonna be dead. Let's duplicate this again, channel. And for this, we really want the word dead to stand out. So let's make this much bigger. So we could just select it and we could increase it manually here. We could type in the amount. Let's say that we want it around maybe 300. Let's see what that looks like. Or we can just come over here and use these little controls here on the side of the box and drag it up to where we want it. Maybe something like that. Now for this word, we're gonna change the color on it so that it stands out. And for this, I'm gonna pick a blue like our primal video blue. And then let's move these around a little bit. Okay, something like that. Now if we preview our original YouTube thumbnail here, I've used a different image, but it's not a problem. We can see that we've had this line chart graph thing here. Also, we've got like a lens flare or a bright spot here that's been added. And we've also got these extra circles down the bottom here just as an extra graphic element. So we'll go ahead and add those now. So we're gonna create that line graph thing here next. We come over here to elements and then there's a few different ways that we could do this, but I'm gonna go to shapes. Now we could just create a rectangle shape, squash it down to the size that we want, or we can come up here and just search for line. And you can see here, we have a graphic here that is a line that if we click on, it's gonna add it straight to our scene and we can customize this up. So let's change the border to our yellow. Okay, something like that. We can increase the border thickness here, maybe something like that. And then all we need to do is adjust the length of this and the position of it to where we want it. So maybe we'll start at about here. Let's duplicate that, let's rotate it. It doesn't matter if this doesn't line up perfect. Now you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard if you want greater precision when you're dragging things around or moving things around. Okay, so that's looking pretty good so far. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in the little circles at each one of these intersections. So again, we'll come over here to elements. Let's choose shapes. We've got circles here. So I'm just gonna select on one of these. Let's move it over here. Let's change the color to white. Let's make it smaller and let's move it where we want it. And then we're gonna go through the same process of duplicating it and covering up each of these intersection points. Okay, it's coming along now. Now, each of these different layers, you can see that as we put our mouse over them, it's gonna highlight what's actually in that layer. And you can see now that we've added quite a lot of different layers here, that it could be easy for us to click and accidentally move or drag something without intending to do that. We can also see over the side here that each one of these elements is its own individual layer. What we can actually do is group some of these layers together so that they are locked or stuck together. So let's go ahead and just draw out a box around all of these things. And then I wanna deselect everything that's not related to this graphic here that we've just made. So I can hold down shift and I can click on something to deselect it. So I'm gonna deselect this text here. 
and also the background image. So that all that we're left with now that is selected is these yellow lines and the circles. And then I just need to right click and we can choose group. So now we see that all 16 here layers are all grouped into one. So I can just pick this up. I can move it around if we need to. And it just makes it much easier to manage all of the different elements in one place. We can even scale this up and down if we needed to. Okay, so it's coming along now. A few extra little pieces we still need to do. Let's come over here to media under photos. And let's search for light flare. So we can get that little graphic behind this here. Again, you'll see we've got a mix of premium or paid and free, but something like this one could work really well. So let's pick this one. Now you can see it's brought in the light flare here, but it's also got the black in the background. So with this selected, we can come down here to blend and let's set this to screen. And you can see that that's removed that background there for us now. So we can pick this up, we can move it here on top of my finger. Maybe we'll make this a bit smaller. And that's looking pretty good. I mean, we can dial this in further if we'd like. We could select on that lens flare again. We could come down here to adjustments and we could adjust or color correct that lens flare, that light flare there. So we could adjust the contrast on it just to change up how it actually looks. So something like this could work well. Now the other thing we had in the original was some little circles down the bottom here, just an extra graphic element. I'm gonna come back over here to elements. Let's go to shapes. Let's pick a circle again. Let's switch it to our blue. So we'll change the fill. We can grab this eyedropper here and pick our color blue. And now we just wanna scale this down. Let's move it down here. And then we just go through that same process of duplicating again. Now there is a keyboard shortcut, Command D if you're a Mac or Control D if you're on Windows, that will duplicate that for you. Okay, we got those in. Again, we can select these. We can deselect the background holding down Shift and we can just group these so that at least they're stuck together. We're not gonna accidentally move them. And then from here, we can move them to where we'd like. Now, the last thing I do here is just tweak the colors normally on the photo so that it pops a bit more. So we can select on that, we can come down here to adjustments, and then you've got your regular color correction tools here. So the first place I like to start is with the warmth slider here. We wanna make sure that our white balance was set correct. So we can add a bit more warmth or yellow orange to it if we need to, or likewise, we can add a bit more blue or cool it down. So that's not too bad. We could then increase the contrast and maybe we'll bump up the saturation a little bit as well. So you don't wanna to go too much with this, It'll look very sunburned but we're just gonna amplify the colors a little bit here. Now, the last thing you could do is, depending on your photo, you might wanna add a little bit of sharpness just to add a little bit more detail. Again, like you don't wanna to add too much, but it just crispens up the image a little bit here. Something like that. So now that we've got our thumbnail image created, we wanna go ahead and download it. So we can hit download up here. We then get to choose our file format and you wanna use either PNG or JPEG. In this case, I'm just gonna run with JPEG. I'm gonna choose download. That file is now saved on our computer. And then if we head over to YouTube, we come up to our YouTube studio area. We can then choose content. Let's go and find the video that we wanna add it to. I'm just gonna pick this one here. We scroll down to where it says thumbnail and we can then choose change or upload. And we can then pick our new file from there. So there we have it. That's how easy it is to create an amazing looking thumbnail image quickly and easily. Now that you've got your thumbnail images sorted, if you're looking to create an amazing banner image for your YouTube channel, then check out the video linked on screen. If you wanna learn how to get to a thousand subscribers fast, that video is also on screen. And as always, there's a bunch of resources and tools designed to help you all linked in the description box below. I'll see you in the next video.